All right, it's Monsoon Mel from Townsville, North Queensland. Um, it's the July show holiday for us today, and it's about as cold as it gets here. So I'm wearing basically all the warm clothing that I own, which isn't a lot. It's a beanie and a jumper. Um, so I thought it'd be fun to talk about bending. So I'll get some concrete sort of bits of information out there first. This is how to bend. Once you're actually able to bend, I think the most important things is have a good strong single note and have a good idea in your mind about what the tone is, the note that you want to achieve, the pitch. So for example, if you play the major scale in the first position, the bottom octave, use one that you, most people have in their mind what the note should sort of sound like. And another good exercise, once you're able to bend, is I like to do three blow and then three draw with the bends sort of in the middle. So, And the last sort of concrete tip I'd like to share is I tend to tongue my bends, like ta-ta-ta-ta-ta. Um, they'll say, make them sound a lot more distinct than if you just slur into them. So like... Versus... With no tonguey. Yeah, so have a good firm idea in your mind about what the tone of the note, what the um, pitch of it is that you want to achieve. That's usually the hardest thing with bending. And um, when I decided to do a video on bending, um, I've actually recorded quite a few and it's very hard for me to get one that I actually like when I listen back to it. For me, what I have the most problems with is the three draw half step bend, pitching the note. Um, I'm often a little bit flat. And um, that's probably a good example of like, what bending is. Like I used to learn to play in the late 1970s. I've been playing for a long time. And bending's like a lifelong pursuit. And uh, yeah, so like it's something that you'll always be sort of working on. So for a lot of people, bending's thought of as quite difficult. Um, it's a shame, it's a bit of a mental hurdle. Um, I might once remember Philip Jazz talking about like bending, overblowing, those sort of things. And he said they're all actually, he doesn't think of one or the other as being any more or less difficult. So um, I think that's a good attitude. And um, to learn to bend, there's a lot of resources out there on the internet. And I encourage you to actually look at them all. The more information that you can get, the more that you've got to sort of work through and work on. But sometimes that can be a bit overwhelming. And probably um, a key difference in my philosophy on how to bend is how I approach learning it. Um, I, um, I learnt and taught um, Tai Chi and Kung Fu in my past. I've got a bit of a history of like sort of learning physical skills and um, getting them to, um, to come out and express yourself in your body. So for something like bending, how do we actually bend? Like when I'm talking, like for example, if you say harmonica, I think that was fairly easy, it's like I can say harmonica. No, actually make your mouth say harmonica, harmonica. It's quite difficult because you're using your brain to consciously do something that normally would happen unconsciously. And bending's the same. In my opinion, bending's very much related in like how you talk. And your body is good at learning those sort of things. Like you learned how to talk as a child, no one actually taught you. If anything, you got some reinforcement from a caregiver of like, oh, those nonsense words sound interesting. You interact with the child, oh, go, 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 go. Or if they say something you just don't understand at all, you might give them a cue of like, mama, dada. And so while the child's making all the noises that they can with their mouth, they're also getting reinforcement about, oh, this sound means something, that sound means something else. And to approach learning with the harmonica, I want to do the same sort of thing. Now, the trouble with bends is some harmonicas are hard to bend. Interestingly, I have one of the late 80s, 90s Hona Marine band here. This is the thing that made a lot of us change to different harmonicas. So I thought surely in my collection of harps I must have something that's a bit difficult to bend. And 
when you're able to bend, you know as soon as you pick up the harmonica whether it's like mechanically able to. That's a barrier for beginners because you're never sure if it's your own harp. So with this, hopefully we can sort of hear what a difficult to bend instrument sounds like. And it's an airy sort of sound. So. Here we are there, the air, hopefully it comes across on the microphone, is all you can hear, you can't really hear the bend. Now obviously I'm still able to bend it, because I know that it, like I can bend, but I also know that this is like very difficult to bend. I can only hear air there, I can't actually hear any note at all. Whereas, if I get a modern harmonica, Basically, anything from any decent manufacturer, they're good quality harmonicas. I'm pretty confident that out of the box it's going to bend. So. And if I try and make that airy sort of noise without any bend... I can get a little bit of air there, but it's so quiet that it's basically impossible to hear. And as soon as I just use a tiny bit more air, the note just sort of sounds out. Yeah, so let's move back to a C harmonica. So, how to learn to bend. Have a good, clean single note. That's the most important thing. Be confident that your body actually knows how to do this. So, how do we give our body time to learn? The way that I like to think about learning to bend is set aside a good 10 minutes so actually put a clock on and one of the ones that i liked to do was have a blow note and a draw note and just experiment with all the tones that you can possibly make don't particularly focus on bending but make as much of a noise as you can so for example we are on the blow first three blow and then three draw And make as many noises as you can. Like you heard there, I had some sort of interesting sound coming on the three blows. Sort of. Not a pretty sound, but interesting. So explore, and that's what I mean. Like let your body have a chance to go, oh, okay, that's a, well, that's really like a screechy sort of noise. I don't really know if I want to play that, but I know how to. It's a bend. Oh, okay, I've got sort of time. So that um, when you actually know what you want to do, like a bend, I'm not thinking, how do I make my mouth make that shape? Do I go wee oo? Do I sort of pull my phone back? Do I pull my tongue back? I'm just going the pitch that I want is ha 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 ha. So the practice for it is good strong single note, doesn't matter if it's tongue blocked, lip pursed, whatever, these are all lip pursed ones, but yeah, set aside like time to make some noises on the harp, let your body hear how you make those noises, and your natural reaction to those will just be all you need, like if you're trying to learn to bend for example, and we're going... Well, that's the bend note like your excitement on achieving it will tell your body that's the mechanics in my mouth that I need to make something that I want and you'll be able to reproduce it so it's a lifelong endeavor like I'm constantly working on my bends my three draw bend half step bend probably not going to be happy with that one either when I listen back to another recording. So, um, oh, important thing they like for a beginner is um, don't be terrified about getting your bend correct or wrong. Like, if we're playing blues, it doesn't have to be a minor third. It doesn't have to be exactly pitched. Like, think about what you're doing. You're taking something that's, like, filed with, like, a little file, get just exactly the right number of cycles per second to get the right pitch note. 
and you're using the acoustics of your mouth to bend it down to an entirely new pitch. So like you looking at a tuner and going, yes, this is the right pitch. That's the wrong approach in my opinion. Listening is the right approach. Listening is the tool that you have available with you on the bandstand. You listen to the band around you and it's an emotion too. Like we're conveying, I'm not going, I want to play a minor third. He's like, I want to play a blue note, like Spoonful. Spoonful's a song that like most people will go, that spoon, that spoon, that spoonful. through to the actual like full pitch natural note so it's that sound that wail that minory sound that you get in the blues so that's what you're looking for in your bend doesn't mean you should be sloppy on your bends and not get away with whatever you can do but yeah don't be terrified that you're going to jump up on stage and someone's going to go oh that's a bit too flat they're probably not going to care if it's too flat if it's too sharp people sort of tend to notice that but you'll know that too like when you're playing along so yeah have good idea in your mind of what the note is that you want to play and a good practice for doing that is just blow you make as many sounds as you can breathe back in make as many sounds as you can and you can do that for everything it doesn't have to be just normal bands it can be blow bands can be overblows like on six blow for example that to overblow same technique breathe out breathe in make as many sounds as you can give your body a chance to explore and have fun because that's what it's all about